You might only use this on finish outs. You might go a month or two without utilizing this tool. But when you do, <laughs> you have to have it. When it's needed, it is desperate. Hey, I'm Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. This is Electric Pro Academy, real skills to make real money. Hey, as you can see here, I've got DeWalt power tools. These are the essential power tools for every residential and commercial electrician. But I'm, I'm relatively brand agnostic. If you show up with Milwaukee, Makita, Bosch, any premium brand, you're gonna get the job done and I'm satisfied. As, as your employer, as your supervisor, as your teacher, your coach, I'm satisfied. Let me, let me give you a pro tip right here. This is gonna make all the difference in your career, right here. If you invest in yourself, if you take your birthday money, if you take your hard-earned money, if you go out and you invest in yourself with power tools, with hand tools, with the right kinds of boots and shoes, if you invest in yourself, you know what's gonna happen? Your employer's gonna see that. Your supervisor's gonna see that. And they're gonna invest in you. It might take two, three weeks, two, three months but they're gonna see that you're perpetually reinvesting your hard earnings into the development of your career. I've got an apprentice who does this. He does this impeccably. His name is Zach. He's always buying the best tools. He will stop at nothing short of excellence. And you know what we gave Zach? After less than a year of working at Jefferson Electric, Zach was given a fully equipped, brand new service van with less than 25 miles because Zach is always investing in himself. In a previous video, we referenced that the modern workforce should, at this point, if you're an electrician, should transition to be fully cordless. There's so many efficiencies to be found and all the power and torque that you need to execute is found in cordless tools today. So, be conscious of the hidden cost of labor. Like, payroll just, it, labor is the single biggest component of every job. Every job, it's labor. And when you can reduce labor and you can demonstrate to your employer, you can demonstrate to your customer efficiencies, and they see that, they notice that, and you're getting a call back for the next one. So here, I've got an example of a five amp hour battery. This five amp hour battery is gonna get the job done for you. It's not gonna crap out on you when you're up on a ladder, and it's got the indicator on the back. So you can see exactly where you are before you climb a 32 foot extension ladder to start drilling a four inch hole through three layers of siding on the back of a home. There's nothing more frustrating and demoralizing than being fully equipped and your battery dies. So very rarely would I ever recommend a small battery like this, a 1.3 amp hour. There's no indicator on the back. And um, the only reason I've got one of these is it's just a little bit smaller for tight spaces and it's lightweight. And this tool right here in particular is so efficient that it will last for the better part of a working day on you but I want every battery to last for an entire working day, so I'm not stopping my workflow. I'll charge my batteries at home. I'll charge them in the truck, but I don't want to break my workflow in order to recharge my batteries. I want to have a full day. There's plenty to worry about without batteries giving out. This is an SDS Plus cordless rotary hammer. I want to call your attention to several things. One, use the handle, right? The handle is essential. This drill comes equipped. It, um, you can rotate the handle if it's getting in your way. You can put it at any orientation on the drill. But there's so much torque here. There's so much torque here that if you're drilling through masonry, which is the intended use of this drill, strictly for masonry. If you're drilling through masonry, let's say poured concrete, and you hit some rebar that's in that concrete, it's going to catch and it's going to torque and it's going to smack you in the gut, the face, and it's going to hurt if you don't have two hands on this sucker. There's, there's plenty of power here. This will go up to a one and one eighth inch diameter hole, which is sufficient for three quarter inch EMT. And uh, let me just explain real quick, three quarter inch EMT, that's the internal diameter, ID. One and one eighth inch hole will provide a sufficient clearance for the OD, outside diameter. Um, this drill also has a couple features here. It's got rotary hammer action to where it's turning and hammering simultaneously. It's also got rotary alone and hammer alone. So three distinct settings for three distinct purposes. Um, it has a lock off feature as all of these drills do. Uh, if you forget to use that feature and you're driving the, down the road in your service van, parts and pieces bouncing in the back, 
you'll hear your power tools actuating as you go over, over bumps in there in the tool bag. So just lock things in the off position. It is safer that way and it'll preserve your battery life. This is an atomic compact circular saw. So it's got a one and a half inch maximum cut depth, which is sufficient for two by framing members on job sites. It's got the ability to direct the dust out away from your cutting surface so that uh, you don't obscure your line or your laser. And uh, it's got a retractable uh, guard on it, as all wood, and an adjustable depth, and also has a lock off feature and a belt hook. This, uh, you'll utilize this, gosh, three, four, five times a day on a residential job site like this to cut your two by four blocking, to space out from door jams, to provide horizontal blocking for special location outlets. This is a custom home. And in a custom home, everything has an exact location. Either a location determined by code, a location that's determined by homeowner preference, uh, or a location that's determined by arrangement around other trades, but everything is going to be forced into precise locations and um, sometimes you've got to cut blocking to build that location, right? You become a momentary carpenter utilizing your circular saw, some other tools, you become a momentary carpenter as an electrician to locate your power where it's required. Now this did not exist when I joined the trade over 15 years ago. This is a cordless oscillator. The oscillator has three degrees of oscillation back and forth. You can hardly see that blade move. Um, it lights the work surface as really all of your power tools should at this point. It's got a quick change blade, no tooling required. Quick, quick change clutch, no tooling required, so that's really convenient. The first oscillator I purchased was real cumbersome. This one also has a universal configuration so that you can buy all kinds of blades and they'll fit in your clutch. Lock off feature. It's an extremely useful tool. This oscillator is ideal for cutting into fine finished surfaces. Let me give you the number one example. Back in the old days, to cut into the side of a kitchen cabinet, we used to hold up the remodel box, trace out a pencil line, plunge two holes with a drill, then bring in a fine tooth, a sawzall, and try to cut that out by cutting out the ink. Whew, tell you what, that'll make you nervous especially in that cabinet that you're trying to make a very extremely precise cut in. That cabinet plus installation is a $800, $1,200, $1,500 dollar cabinet. You might only use this on finish outs. You might go a month or two without utilizing this tool. But when you do, <laughs> you have to have it. When it's needed, it is desperately needed. Sawzall has been around for a long time. At this point, cordless sawzalls pack plenty of punch. This also has a lock off feature, which is essential. This blade is so aggressive and exposed that I highly recommend you lock it off after every single use. Um, this is going to suck your juice. I mean, this tool right here is your number one juice suck. So put your largest battery on your Sawzall or you're going to annoy the heck out of yourself having to swap batteries out. This really, really draws. Um, the Sawzall chuck here has four configurations. And uh, the blade can be rotated. 180 degrees, it can be put in the vertical, it can be re reversed in the vertical. There's just as much cutting power in any orientation, but what that ability to orient allows is to take the profile of the Sawzall and to get it into tight spaces and to still cut in the direction of choice. Um, I wanna focus real quick on the blade of choice for your Sawzall. Blades come in all lengths and types, but one of the most important uh, dynamics of any blade is teeth per inch. This is about a uh, six TPI, teeth per inch. This is good for rough cuts. You can go all the way up to 24, 32 teeth per inch for materials that require a fine tooth. Uh, let's say ferrous and non-ferrous metals. You're really gonna struggle. It's gonna buck and jerk if you attempt to cut metal, plastics, fiberglass with a coarse blade like this. You're gonna wanna find uh, have a variety of blades, both short and long, both coarse and fine, to fully and properly equip your Sawzall and make it safe and optimal. If your budget is tight and you can only buy two tools, here they are. Let me explain. You're going to use this tool 30, 40 times a day on a job site like this, and that might be an understatement. Depending on the task that's assigned to you, you might use this tool to drill 150, 250 holes to route your wiring throughout the entire job site. 
This tool has a forward and a reverse position. It has a locked off position and it has a low and a high speed as indicated on the back of the tool. Um, you're gonna want to adjust your speed to the size of your bit, uh, not the length, but actually the diameter of your bit and the material that's being used. That guide is contained with your drill when you purchase it and I fully recommend that you respect that. If you overstress your drill by doing this, applying high force while utilizing a very large bit in a tough material on a high speed, guess what? Within a year, you're gonna be taking this to the service center and either processing your warranty or they may not honor the warranty because they'll see signs of abuse. So just recognize that proper use of even a professional grade power tool is essential for uh, lasting performance. Um, this drill, I, I kind of lean this direction. I know it's not as common to find this configuration of the right angle drill on job sites. It's a little more common for plumbers, but guess what? I'm so compact and because my grip position is so far from the axis of torque, I actually have a lot of outstanding control and prevention um, from kicking and bucking when the bit gets in a bind. So whatever cordless drill you purchase, I'm gonna recommend 18 volts or greater. I'm gonna recommend the XRP, which is DeWalt's contractor version. And um, I gotta focus on the bit here real quick. This is a self-feeding auger bit. See those threads on the end? Those threads are gonna pull you through the work so that the holes are cut quickly. If you're drilling 250 holes a day, um, you're gonna burn through one of these auger bits almost on a daily basis. Uh, but it's, uh, it's worth every penny and the holes are gonna go fast. You're gonna be an extremely efficient worker. Your boss is gonna see that. Your supervisor is gonna take note. The homeowner is gonna make comment. And guess what? When employee reviews come around, you're on track. Lefty Lucy releases the bit. Righty tighty fastens it down. A couple more things I like about this style a bit, as you can see, is uh, it's hexagonal. If you are a homeowner, a DIYer, a contractor, an apprentice, if you're in any trade, this is it. If you look at a plumber's toolbox, he's got one. If you look at a carpenter's toolbox, he's got one. If you look at an electrician, any, tool, any toolbox, they've got this. This is a compact impact driver. Um, the collar releases the bit. The bit is a universal standard. You'll find these hexagonal bits at every home store, supply store, electrical supply. Um, this has also a forward and a reverse position simply by adjusting the plunger there. And the one limitation to a smaller battery is it actually does not, uh, real world, deliver as much torque. So if I'm driving a large fastener, let's say a um, 5 16 diameter, four inch long fastener into some old growth lumber, this little battery doesn't actually get the job done. I'm going to transition to a 5 amp hour battery. So I'm going to be job site conscious, I'm going to be task conscious, but again, it comes back to my recommendation. When you hang this little dr impact driver in your belt loop or your, uh, your tool belt, you're going to be carrying less weight, you're going to be putting less strain on your joints, you're going to be less imbalanced by utilizing lightweight tooling, as long as it's sufficient for the task at hand. All right, so as an electrician on a job site, you're bringing the power, right? There's nothing there until you make it happen. So unfortunately, about 85% of every job is in the dark. And a clean work site is a safe work site, but also an illuminated work site. Uh, OSHA sets a standard for work sites of minimum lumen level, that's minimum lighting level for safe work conditions. And as an electrician, it's going to be there when you leave, but until you're done, bring your own work light. I'm a fan of headlamps. I'm a fan of stationary work lights, portable work lights. I'm a fan of string lights to light up a, an area in a more lasting way that can be utilized by any trade, but you have to have lights. And I would recommend actually having two to diff four different forms of light in your equipment by the time you have a service van. I encourage you to comment below about what tools we missed that you view to be essential and join us for the next video where we talk about essential hand tools.